Hello, this is Ben119 and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Pikmin 3 Deluxe Demo and I'm going to be telling you my thoughts. I'm going to do a bit of a, a review on it, I guess you could say. Sorry, I am struggling to speak. So, before I get into it, I have got some recorded gameplay here of all of day 2. And I made sure to go slow enough that you could read all the text, but I also went fast enough that I got everything in one day, so then you get to see everything. So if you have not yet played Pikmin 3, uh, I recommend playing this demo first, so then you know a bit about the game. But if you want to be spoiled, that's fine, you can just watch it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the demo and what it has to offer. So the demo has to offer all of the gameplay up to the Armored Mordad fight. You get to play up to the Armored Mordad fight and you get to carry it back. You get one mission from Collect Treasures, and you get to have a look at all the different achievements. Outside of that, you can't progress anymore in the story, you can't unlock any of the missions straight away. But it's a nice little bit of stuff you can mess around with, I guess. I, I'm alright with it, I'm doing loads of mission 1 attempts to try and get as good a score as possible, so I'm alright. I think if they had give us, given us any more content, I feel like people would have just played it and thought, that's all the game has to offer. Well, not that's all the game has to offer, but they probably play it and just think, oh, I've already played three days of this and bored. I don't want to buy the whole game. However, if they'd only given us day one, I feel like people would have seen day one and just thought the game was a bit boring, and then they probably wouldn't have bought it. But I think giving you all the way up to the Armored Mordad, I think it's a good amount of gameplay, and it leaves you wanting more. But you don't feel like, oh, I've seen enough. Why well, wouldn't feel that way? But yeah, we get to see a lot of stuff. We get to see enemies. We get to see how Pikmin interact with certain things. So, for anyone new to the Pikmin series, I guess that's really good. So, another thing I should talk about is the lock on mechanics, because that is a big change. And I, I like the lock on mechanics. I think it's really cool because it's like a smart lock on. You can lock onto things easier. It's definitely easier than Wii U. My only problem with it is it's sometimes a bit too smart. Sometimes it locks onto stuff you don't want it to lock onto. It can be a bit annoying, but it is really quick to cancel out. You just have to press B and it cancels out. So that's nice and easy. Oh yeah, I just showed there. There was, there was like a beginner thing that says hint because I'm on the easy mode. Oh yeah, modes. I'm going to talk about modes now. So there's three modes. There's normal mode, there's hard mode, and there's ultra spicy spray mode. Now, really, I think normal mode should have been easy mode because you get 18 minutes of in-game time on each day. Now, if you're not familiar with Pikmin, I think each day in Pikmin 3 is 13 minutes or 13 and a half minutes, so you get an extra 5 minutes of in-game time, basically. Uh, enemies have a lot less health. There's extra pellets, I think. I think there's extra nectar around. So it basically makes the game a lot easier for beginners. Plus, if you want hints, there's arrows that show you where to go and what to do. So it's basically the same game, but it's a lot easier and it's a lot more accessible. And then you've got hard mode. Hard mode is basically exactly the same as regular Pikmin 3. Well, it's obviously not the same game because it's Pikmin 3 Deluxe, but you know. Like it's the same difficulty. And Ultra Spicy Spray Mode, we don't know much about it yet. I presume with Ultra Spicy Spray Mode there's going to be even less in-game time. But the thing we do know about Ultra Spicy Spray Mode is that you can only have 60 Pikmin on the field. Which is going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be really good to do casually. Plus I think speedruns are going to be interesting to watch because there's going to be less Pikmin and multitasking at once. So doing multiple things at once is going to be harder. But it will still be really cool. I think the fact that they give you nectar on day 2, this close to the start, is really good because you get to see what nectar does and it gives you stronger Pikmin to start with. However, in regular Pikmin 3, the earliest point you get nectar I think is probably like day 4 or 5 in the snow area. You could probably get some spicy spray before then, but you know the cave where you fight the venomous Fosbat? You get nectar in there, and I guess it's cool, but... It's a bit late in the game, in my opinion, to get Nectar. I just think showing off simple things like Nectar early on is nice, because then you know what it does, you know where to find it, and you know that there's a benefit on your Pikmin, because the quality of is stronger. It's just really cool. 
So graphic wise in this game, I think the graphics, if you put them both side by side, someone's done a good side by side video, you can't really tell the difference that much, but I've been playing so much Pikmin 3 on Wii U that when I play it on here I can tell the difference. It's not much of a difference, but it is a difference, it does look a little bit better, a little bit clearer. It probably runs better as well, like there's less lag I bet later on. And I noticed some of the textures are different, like especially the crystal walls and the regular walls of stripes on them. I think the electric gates are a bit different as well. I have no idea why they updated the textures. Like you may have noticed some of the regular walls, they have stripes on them. I have no idea what the stripes mean. I think what it could mean is maybe how strong the wall is. Because I know later on in the game some of the dirt walls take longer to knock down than others earlier in the game. So maybe it's to do with health. But I am not so sure. I think it could mean anything. But it's definitely not the colour Pikmin because you can use any colour on the gate anyway. So yeah. Now I was worried when they were going to make this easy mode. I thought they were going to make it too easy. And I think they've done it just right. I think if it was any easier the game would just be completely boring. But I think it still could have been a little bit harder. Because look how easy I killed that ball bulb straight away. Like. Ball bulbs are already easy enough on the normal mode in regular Pikmin 3. So just having them like even easier is just a joke. But oh well. Like if I was a casual player, if I've never played Pikmin before, I'd probably enjoy it more, but it's just the fact that I've played so much Pikmin 3 that I already found it easy in that game, so I'm just gonna find it even easier in this game. But yeah, I guess it's cool for beginners or kids just getting into Pikmin. I think it's great that they're making it more accessible to different audiences. I think that's a very important thing that they need to do. I think even just releasing this demo has been really good because people who have probably never even heard of Pikmin have probably just played this free demo and they've probably seen all the different things in the game and they may even be interested to buy it, which is nice. I think having a free demo of a game is really good because say if there's a game and it looks good, Usually new games are like, well I'm living in the UK so it'd be like £50 for like a new game. Which I guess is quite a bit of money, especially if you don't know that much about the game and whether you'll enjoy it or not. So having a free demo is definitely a good thing. Some people can play it before buying it. Because you don't really want to pay like £50 and then you don't really enjoy it that much because that's quite a bit of money you've just wasted on a game. But if people play the demo and then they buy it then that's really good. Plus, even if they didn't buy the game, at least they played the demo and they might have enjoyed it. I just think it's really cool that they're getting more people interested in Pikmin and that we got a Pikmin game coming on the Nintendo Switch. Because it does mean a lot to me actually, because I've been waiting for a new Pikmin game for ages since Pikmin 3. But yeah, enough of that side of it, let's carry on talking about the game. So, Mission Mode has got a really cool new bit. And it's called After Hours. So, in regular Pikmin 3, if you're playing a mission, when the timer is over, the timer is over. Like, the mission is just done, and you can't really go back to it. But in this new one here, say if you get a gold on mission 1, like, say you get, like, 1,900 points, for example, like, it lets you carry on after the timer's done, if you want to. But obviously, any of the points you get after that don't count. But it's just really nice because you're able to finish missions, which I think is really cool. Because it's annoying on the regular Pikmin 3, say if you were playing like one of the late hard missions and you get most of it done, but it's still like quite a bit you still haven't done. You don't really feel like playing the whole mission again just to do that one bit, but it'd just be nice just to finish off in a few minutes. I think learning a mission platinum it's going to be more accessible now and it's going to be easier for people to get Platinums because they're just going to play through the mission and then they can just carry on and they can see how long they had left and the amount of time they have left each time is going to go lower and lower until eventually they have no time left and they can Platinum the mission just fine I think it's really helpful to learn missions I think it's good because it gives people more of a sense of achievement that they've actually finished the mission even though technically they didn't do it in time but I don't know, I just think it's a really nice mechanic. I've always wanted that. I've always wanted to be able to finish missions without the time. Even though I got platinum on every single mission in Collect Treasure, Battle Enemies and Defeat Bosses, it's still a really nice feature. I probably won't really need it, there might be the odd time where I do need it, but 
I don't know. I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to platinum them all first try because I've played them so many times on regular Pikmin 3. But definitely for people learning mission mode and who are new to Pikmin, it is a very, very good idea. I think it is really nice. Oh yeah, the next thing I want to talk about. So the next thing I want to talk about is the multiplayer story mode. Now, I really like what they've done with multiplayer story mode. I've not played it much, but there is one annoying thing about it. Now the annoying thing is, say if someone's doing a task and someone else gets a data file, the data file appears on both, like, over the whole screen, so then the other person can't carry on. Or say if someone takes out some Pikmin or if someone enters a cutscene, and that basically stops both people from playing. Like, it'd just be nice if when you went into cutscenes or when you picked up data files, it would only appear for that one person so then the other person could carry on. Because I was playing through day two, and it was a little bit annoying because I was on the other side of the map working with some rocks, and then someone else freed Brittany, and it teleported me all the way over to where Brittany was, and all my Pikmin were left on the other side of the map, and it was really annoying because I needed to get back to them because they were working on something. But I think other than that, it's a really, really good idea. I've always wanted to play a Pikmin 3 two-player. I've always thought it would be really interesting to do story mode two-player. I think definitely if you could get two speedrunners together and get them both to play, I think it could be crazy to watch. Like, say if like, two people did an All Fruits run, or even just an any percent run. I think All Fruits would be better though because the routing would be more interesting. I think it'd make a really interesting run if you're both multitasking at the same time. I don't know. I'm just talking about speedrunning at this point. I need to talk more about the casual point. So as you can see here on the screen, there's arrows which guide you to where you need to be. I think the arrows are good in a way because one, you don't get lost and it's telling you the way to go and you spend less time like exploring. But the bad thing is you do spend less time exploring and you're less likely to just search around yourself for fruit and pellets and enemies. I think the best thing about Pikmin is the exploring part, where you're just looking around, collecting fruits, figuring out the area, learning the different areas. That's what I really enjoyed about Pikmin 3. When I first played Pikmin 3, I was quite young. I must have been like 11 or 10 when it first came out. And I remember, like, I was rubbish at Pikmin back then, but... I just really enjoyed just exploring all the areas, just getting a few fruits each day. Like, I was not very good at all. Like, I got stuck in Twilight River at, at one point because I couldn't figure out where to go next. But I just really enjoyed just exploring everywhere. As soon as I got a new colour, I'd go back to an old area. And I'd try and access something else. And then I'd go back to certain places. It's just really fun, just exploring all the maps for the first time. So if you never play Pikmin 3, and you plan to get it, then you're gonna enjoy it a lot. You just have to explore around. Like, if you're just trying to get to the end of the game as fast as you can, it's probably nowhere near as fun. Fun fact, I've only ever done any percent once. I really don't like any percent for this game. I appreciate the speedruns of it, but I just can't enjoy the game any percent. Like, the way I enjoy the game is by collecting all 30 fruits and then doing the final boss. It's just the most fun way, in my opinion, to play the game. But, yeah. When I say all 30 fruits, I mean all 30 types of fruits. There is way more than 30 in the game, by the way, if you've never played it. But yeah, the arrows are cool, but I'm just worried that it's going to put some new players off and they're just going to stick to the arrows and they're never going to explore outside of the arrows and get through. I worry that people will just follow the arrows. But people can do what they want. I just think people won't enjoy the game as much if they just follow the arrows the whole time. But that's just my opinion. The uh, next thing I want to talk about is the Piclopedia. So, there are some P Piclopedia entries that you do get in the demo. Because there's not that many enemies in the demo, to be honest. But it's just nice. You get to read about the captain's opinions on the enemies. You get to see some information about them. It's pretty cool. It's not as good as the Pikmin 3 Piclopedia. Not the Pikmin 3, the Pikmin 2 Piclopedia. Where you get to see them eating Pic Pic carrots. But, oh well. It's still pretty cool just to get a list of all the enemies. I guess it's more for like Pikmin fans or newcomers who don't know much about the enemies. I think it's pretty cool. Like it's not like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever, but it's definitely like a nice little feature to have. Uh, another new feature I want to talk about is the badges. Now badges are basically like achievements because 
you know, like Xbox and PlayStation games, they have achievements. Now, Nintendo games don't really have achievements. Some games do, but they don't have like a main system where you have gamer score or trophies. But this game does have achievements, and throughout the demo, I think it's possible to get 30% of them. Well, from what I've been playing, I think you can only get 30%. Because I've been looking through and I can't see any others that I could get. And I've got all the possible ones from what I can think of. But some of them look really creative, some of them are actually fairly hard. I know there's one on mission mode where it says get 10 platinum medals, which for a casual player I think that's pretty difficult. But that's good, we want difficult achievements. Some of the achievements I think are just killing the main story bosses, which is okay, that's a good little milestone. Some of them are getting a certain amount of fruit. One of them is to get 30 days worth of juice, that's a cool one. So you have to do a lot of fruit collecting for that. Now sadly there's no achievement for completing the game in a certain amount of days. I think that would have been a really cool achievement, even if it was just like 20 days. That would still be cool. I was saying in another video on my, I think it was my Pikmin 3 Deluxe trailer analysis. I was on about how, uh, with achievements, they should do a 10 day achievement. But I think Nintendo would never do that, because Nintendo probably didn't even... Uh, plan for it to be beaten in 10 days. But that would be really cool. Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to talk about is leaderboards. So leaderboards... I hope they get fixed. Because on the Wii U version, with the leaderboards, they're broken basically. So if you go into mission mode, like there'll be impossible scores on there that are impossible to beat. And it's hard to tell how good you actually are. Because a lot of the times I've got on mission mode, I think they're really good, and I think they're probably in the top 100 at least. But then I actually look, and the world record is like twice as high as mine. And I'm just thinking there's no way they have done that. They've probably just got like a glitch, not a glitch, like they've probably hacked the Wii U somehow to finish the mission on the frame it starts to get a perfect score, or something like that. I just hope that the leaderboards in this version stay real, and I hope that if people do hack, I hope that Nintendo removes these scores so then it doesn't affect the people who play the missions normally like I do. And I think it'd be cool if there was like a list, like when you went on the scores where it said like the top 100 players, or it was like a global thing. If you've ever played Super Mario Odyssey, it, the Koopa Free running, there's like a big leaderboard and it shows you where you are in the world. And it can be really satisfying to improve. I remember I've got to like top 250 in one of them and it was satisfying to do. And I think it just gives you more incentive to improve when there's people ahead of you. Like say if you see someone one second ahead, like that makes you want to improve, that makes you want to beat that one player. And I think when that's there, like there's obviously more competition, I think it'd be a really good opportunity for Nintendo to do that. I hope they've already done that, but if they haven't, it's okay. we still got global rankings with the graph chart where we can see where we are. I wonder if it's still going to be a graph like in regular Pikmin 3. But who knows, maybe it could be completely different. And another thing I was thinking of, I have mentioned this a bit, but I'm just wondering how speedruns of Pikmin 3 Deluxe are going to be affected. So I'm going to talk a bit about the All Fruits category of Pikmin 3. So if you don't know, I've made an All Fruits speedrun tutorial in Pikmin 3, and some of the tricks might not work in this version, because clipping out of bounds may be impossible in some areas. Because I tested a clip out of bounds in this level, and it doesn't work. So I presume they've patched a lot of the out of bounds. However, with the new easy mode, we got five minutes of extra time on each on each day. And all the enemies have a lot less health on the easiest mode. So doing a 10 day completion is probably still possible. It's probably still quite easy, to be honest. Even though 10 day isn't really easy unless you practice. But I think it'll be cool. I think speedruns all look a lot different. I hope there's less glitches. I think just seeing regular Pikmin gameplay is going to be really refreshing. Because we have a lot of runs, there's a lot of clipping out of bounds. Which is really cool, I like clipping out of bounds and everything, but I think just playing the game the normal way would be really cool as well. Because you can always still do that clipping on the regular version. Like if you want to play this version, we could do that casual... Not casual, I mean just uh, do everything the regular way but fast, but then you got the original Pikmin 3 where you do clips and everything. 
I don't know. There'll probably still be glitches on this version. There's probably already been some glitches found. I need to go back in the Pikmin Discord to see what people have found. Oh yeah, if you are interested in Pikmin speedrunning, I'd highly recommend joining the Pikmin 3 Deluxe speedrunning Discord and the Pikmin 3 Discord because there are a lot of very good people in Discord and they will be happy to chat to you about Pikmin 3 because we all love Pikmin 3. I'm usually in the Discord. I've not been in Discord as much at the moment, but especially closer to when Pikmin 3 Deluxe releases and probably in the next few weeks I'll be on Discord a lot more. So if anyone's got any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, another thing I want to mention, I think I mentioned this before about enemies having less health, but watch this here. Look at how quick this Wally Hop dies. I just think it's a bit embarrassing. Like I was saying, it's okay to nerf the enemies to be slightly easier to beginners, but what I think they've done is I think they've made them a bit too easy on normal mode. I think what they should have done is they should have made this easy mode, and they should have made hard mode normal mode, and then they should have made spicy spray mode hard mode. I think that would have been much better, but that's Nintendo. If it appeals to younger audience and more people, I think that's good, obviously. I'm just repeating myself at this point. But I've said most of the stuff I've wanted to say, I'm just thinking about any other topics that I didn't cover. Oh yeah, I just remind that just reminded me. Uh, the copad feature. So I talked a little bit about Go Here in my Pikmin 3 Deluxe trailer analysis. And the copad feature is still here. It's still with us. We still got it. You just have to press minus and then go across on the map. It's pretty easy to do, it's still really fast. Not quite as fast as tapping the gamepad, but it's still cool. I think it's really helpful. Something that w I will have to get used to though, is having to hold down the Y button or the X button. I think it is the Y button, yeah the Y button. To disband my Pikmin and to switch to Captains because Usually in regular Pikmin 3, both of those things are on different buttons, but having them assigned to the same button is going to be a bit weird at first, but we'll get used to it eventually. I'm already getting used to the new controls at this point. Yeah, I think it's really cool how they've got this. I don't miss the Wii Remote controls, I've never been a huge fan of playing with a Wii Remote. You can still do gyro controls if you want to, but I prefer to just play like on the Pro Controller with regular aiming like with Pitman 1. But that's just my opinion. If you enjoy the gyro controls then feel free to play on them. I'm not stopping you. Oh yeah the whistle. I didn't mention the whistle. Jesus Christ. The whistle. I know a lot of people are gonna like it but sadly it's a no for me. I don't particularly like this new whistle. I like how you can whistle Pikmin without disturbing Pikmin around that are carrying stuff. But I don't like how big the whistle is, it just seems too big. I wish what you could do is, you know when you press the Y button? I wish you could switch your whistle to a smaller whistle. And the smaller whistle could just whistle Pikmin in a smaller area. But with this massive whistle it's sometimes difficult to whistle Pikmin without disturbing other Pikmin. But that's just my opinion on this. There's a data file over I missed, I'm just heading over to... The Ahmed Mordad because he's heading towards the Rock Onion. I think the uh, Switch Pro Controller is a really good controller. The Wii U Pro Controller is already dead good for this game, but the Switch Pro Controller is going to be even better. I can feel it already with the gameplay I've done so far. And just from playing this demo, I think it's all going to be amazing. Like I was saying, there's obviously a few flaws with it, like I was saying. But I think it's really good, I think it's really cool. Like a lot of these new changes, they'll take a bit of getting used to. Like for example, when you finish knocking down a wall, when you finish knocking down a wall, Pikmin come back to you if you're near them, if you're near the onion, and Pikmin go there, they automatically go to you, or if you're near a bridge pile that's been finished, they'll go back to you. And when you target certain things, say if you target something that needs 10 Pikmin, then 10 Pikmin will go on it and no more and no less. Unless you only have Say if there's a ball bulb that needs 10 and you have 8 reds, then only 8 reds will go on, even if you have more other colours with you, which is a bit annoying. I think that could have been fixed maybe, but it might be for the best because you might try and get something in the water and you might drown other colours. So I guess that's a good thing, thinking about it. Other than that, everything's really cool. 
Oh yeah, one more flaw. Two player mode is messy. When you're throwing Pikmin about in boss fights, I think what should happen in in the two player mode is when you take out Pikmin at the start of the day, those Pikmin should just be assigned to you and the other player shouldn't be able to pick them up no matter what. Because I've done boss fights and I've been throwing Pikmin and someone else playing with me has been throwing Pikmin and all the Pikmin just get mixed up and one person ends up with way more than the other. Like one person will have 80 Pikmin, the other will have 20. And all the colours are unmatched. Like everyone has an equal ama amount of Pikmin and then they also all get mixed up and it's a bit annoying. But I think that could have been easily fixed if they made it so only the ones you had came back to you. But oh well, it's a small flaw. I can get over that. I don't play multiplayer that much anyway. Uh, the new modes with Olimar and Louie, I've seen some clips of them on YouTube. And from what I've seen, it's basically the story mode areas, but you're collecting things like nuggets, you're killing enemies, you're getting fruit. It basically looks a bit like mission mode to me. It looks a bit like missions, which is a little bit disappointing. It would have been nice to have a new story mode with a day system and have an actual storyline. There might still be a storyline, but that's all I really know about that, to be fair. I don't know much more about it. And the other thing I wanted to mention, it's a very small thing, you might have noticed it, I definitely noticed it straight away, but when you're on a day, it doesn't say the day number in the top right. It does when you go on the menu, it shows you the days, but it's just a little bit annoying how it doesn't show what day you're on. I wish it did, because things like 10 day runs, people won't know it only took 10 days. And they will really still will if they see their final result, but I just wish you could like toggle it on and off. The 10 day thing, not 10 day thing, but just the day counter in the top right. Whether it's displaying or not. Uh, I think all the customizable options are cool. How you can turn on and off gyro controls and different control styles it tells you about. I think all that stuff is really interesting and the more of it we have, the better. Because extra content, I guess. You know, it's just extra stuff. Even if it's not that good, at least it's still extra stuff we've got. And another thing I noticed is on mission mode. On the menu, when you're about to play a mission, there is a little description and it tells you a bit about each colour Pikmin. I think that's really helpful for beginners who've never played Pikmin before because you get to know some helpful information about each colour. I just think it's really helpful. I think it's just a nice little touch. It's basically Pikmin 3 but with pretty much everything fixed and extra on top. So from the demo so far, I rate the game 9 out of 10. Now with Pikmin 3, I would, rate, I would rate Pikmin 3 an 8 out of 10. I think this is a 9 out of 10 because of all the things they've changed, the extra content. But I'm just a little bit unsure on what they're going to do with the final game. And so far it's not quite looking like a 10, but it's definitely better than regular Pikmin 3. Plus we don't know what Bingo Battle is going to be like. There might be online mode with Bingo Battle, there might not be. Who knows, let's hope there is. So that's going to wrap up this video, it's a bit of a long one, I probably missed out some stuff so if I did please leave a comment with what I missed. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something new, I hope, I don't know, I just hope you enjoyed it to be honest. If you did, please subscribe because it will help out my channel and like the video if you'd like it and share it if you want, if there's anyone you think will enjoy it then definitely share it to them because then they will see it as well. So thank you so much, and enjoy the end of the video. Goodbye, and thank you for watching.